So why TypeScript? It's a question that I often get from viewers, but you know what? With all the TypeScript content that I put on this channel, I still haven't done a video on just that. So that's what I'm gonna do right now on this blue collar coder. So let's start with a scenario. This is a web page. it's got a profile editor. So it works fine out of the box for our developer, but when our investor goes to it, they get ugh, this error. And what does that show of us that we can't make a simple profile page work? So is there a way that TypeScript can help our application that's now written in JavaScript figure out these issues before we put them into production? Well, let's go take a look. All right, so here is our profile page. And we can go down here and we can see that we are getting a user and then we're putting them into this form and there's maybe an issue in there. So now this application is set up as a demo. So it's got both JS and TS implementations of both an API and a design systems language. So I think the issue might be with the API. So let's see if we can improve on this by changing the API to the TypeScript version of the API by changing JS to TS. And the only other change we need to make is we need to bring in the user type and then bop that down in here into the state so we can say that the, the user is a user. Okay, so let's take a look over at the app and see if there's anything that's changed. Ah, okay, so our runtime error has turned into a compile time error. So where we used to have to go manually verify the page, now we're getting errors before we actually send the page out. So let's go take a look and see what that error is. If I go to the console, I can see there's a problem. It says the object is possibly undefined, so let's double click on that and it takes me right to the line. And then in this case, I can use the question mark operator, which is in both JavaScript and TypeScript. Save it and let's see if we work. There we go, Jane Investor is now getting her page. She's happy and she thinks that we're competent enough to build a profile page, which is a good sign maybe for the rest of our product. Okay, but let's take a look at what have we actually bought in terms of TypeScript complexity to make all this happen. Well, let's take a look at our JavaScript code and then take a look at our TypeScript code and we'll put them side by side and see what the differences are. So you can see that these two files are remarkably similar. We've got a list of users and then we've got get user functions in both. But there's some additional stuff on the TypeScript side. On the TypeScript side, we have an exported interface for user that says what the structure of a user looks like. They've got a name, which is a string. They've got an address, which has this question mark after it, which means that it's optional. It could be there or not there. But if it is there, then there's an email inside of it. Then users, we add on this record, which basically says it's a, an object that has a key that's a type of string, and then the value is a type of user. And so TypeJS is checking to make sure that all of the users match that standard. And then finally, when it comes to get user, there is some slight difference. There is an ID that's specified as a string in this case, and then the output of the function is also specified where we are saying that it's a promise to return a user, which is very common when it comes to asynchronous functions. But what's really critical here is that the actual implementation of these functions is exactly the same. You've got a promise.resolve that returns the user with that ID, which is great because that shows us that TypeScript is really just JavaScript with types. So anywhere where you're defining input data or output data or the declaration of a variable, that's really the only time you're gonna to need to interface with TypeScript. In this case, you just need to say that the inputs to the function are a string and the outputs to the function are a promise with that particular type. So really, really easy. So this is the primary benefit that most people find in TypeScript is that type checking that allows people to put types on their functions and their methods and make sure that when they're called, they're called correctly. But there's another benefit that I find in TypeScript, and that's the communication between members of the team. So let's go take a look back at our application and take a look at the design systems language stuff. So what is a DSL? Well, a DSL is a design system language, and it's a set of shared components that share between the different applications in your system. And in this case, we're just getting an image from that. Now, if you go down here, we can see that the image has a source on it, which is great. Now, let's go and take a look and see if we add TypeScript, what, how that changes things. So what is that in this case? Well, let's go take a look at our problems and see that we're missing the alt property from the image. So we'll just go and add that. Your 
image, something like that along that line. So what TypeScript is allowing our DSL developers to do is communicate through TypeScript the requirements that they have for our front end developers to meet when it comes to proper use of those components. Now, there has been stuff like this for React, for example, in the past with prop types, but again, those are runtime checks. And this is a compile time check that makes sure that your application is good to go before it goes out into production. So these are just two of the benefits of TypeScript. And you can see why from this TypeScript has gone from in 2012, a relatively obscure language to the fourth most popular language in the world this year. And its rise doesn't appear to be stopping. Now, popularity isn't everything, but you can see the impact of that in the ecosystem. All of the major Vue frameworks, Vue, React, Angular, they're all based on TypeScript. And if you're a backend developer, Nest.js is excellent if you use TypeScript. And GraphQL is fantastic when it comes to TypeScript support. There's generators that will go and build TypeScript bindings from your schemas. It's great stuff. And TypeScript support is baked right into Microsoft's VS Code, of course, without even any extensions. So that's great. And let's go back to that ranking graph just one more time for a second, because it's really interesting to see how the number one language, JavaScript, and the number four language are essentially the same thing. Again, TypeScript is just JavaScript with types. And of course, all of this is helped by Microsoft being a big backer of TypeScript. So before you get into your TypeScript journey, let me just give you a few points of advice. The first one is that it's easier to start TypeScript on a new project as opposed to bring it into an existing project, as you can imagine. But there are ways to go and scale back the strictness of TypeScript to make it easier to upgrade. Which brings me to my second point, which is that gradient of strictness actually allows for folks to kind of cheat the typing just to get things out the door. So I really strongly advise you to have an advocate for TypeScript in your organization, someone who's going to help you through that process and make sure that you're getting all the benefits of TypeScript as you go through that conversion. So of course, being on that gradient means that you can actually go on the other edge of the spectrum and actually get too complex with it, which is another thing to watch out for. So as you're going through, just make sure that you're right sizing the strictness of TypeScript to your application and your needs. And finally, I'd like to talk about Java developers transitioning into the TypeScript ecosystem. It's really important to understand that TypeScript is not Java. It's JavaScript. And the way that you write JavaScript is inherently different than the way you write Java. There's closures, there's built-in asynchronous support. It's a very different language. So I recommend that you first learn the fundamentals of JavaScript before adding on the types. TypeScript is not Java on JavaScript. Well, I hope this video helps encourage you to choose TypeScript for your next project. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comments section down below. I love your comments and YouTube does too. In the meantime, of course, feel free to hit that like button if you like the video and hit that subscribe button if you really like the video and you wanna see more like it.